Hearing before a subcommittee of the Committee on the Judiciary, United States Senate, 83rd Congress, Second Session, on H.R. 7786, to honor veterans on the 11th day of November of each year, a day dedicated to world peace. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Veterans Day Tuesday, May 11th, 1954 United States Senate Standing Subcommittee on Charters, Holidays, and Celebrations of the Committee on the Judiciary, Washington, D.C. The subcommittee met at 10.30 a.m., pursuant to call, in Room 341, Senate Office Building, Senator John M. Butler, Chairman of the Subcommittee, presiding. Present, Senator Butler, presiding. Present also, Thomas B. Collins, Subcommittee Counsel. Senator Butler. You may go ahead, Mr. Collins. Mr. Collins. Mr. Chairman, this is a hearing by our Standing Committee on Charters, Holidays, and Celebrations of the Committee on the Judiciary to consider H.R. 7786, a bill introduced by Congressman Rees of Kansas, to change Armistice Day to Veterans Day. We have a number of witnesses here this morning. Our first witness is Congressman Rees of Kansas, the author of the bill. H.R. 7786 follows. H.R. 7786, 83rd Congress, Second Session. An act to honor veterans on the 11th day of November of each year, a day dedicated to world peace. Be it enacted by the Senate and House of Representatives of the United States of America, in Congress assembled, that the act entitled, an act making the 11th day of November in each year a legal holiday, approved May 13, 1938, 52 Statute 351, 5 U.S.C. Section 87A, is hereby amended by striking out the word armistice and inserting in lieu thereof the word veterans. Passed in the House of Representatives, March 15, 1954. Attest, Lyle O. Snader, Clerk. Senator Butler. The purpose is to change Armistice Day to Veterans Day. Is the bill in the same form it was when the Judiciary Committee acted on it before? Mr. Collins. Identical. I might say for the record, Senator, that this subcommittee of which you are chairman reported this bill favorably to the full committee. Senator Butler. We didn't get very far, however. Congressman Rees, we are happy to have you here. Statement of Honorable Edward H. Rees, a representative in Congress from the State of Kansas. Mr. Rees, thank you, Mr. Chairman. We appreciate this opportunity of coming to talk with you with respect to this proposed legislation. My statement will be short. It is a bill that I introduced, H.R. 7786. It passed the House without a single dissenting vote. This legislation will change the name of Armistice Day to Veterans Day. Under existing law, November 11th of each year is a day to be dedicated to the cause of world peace and to be known as Armistice Day. This bill, which the subcommittee has before it, merely changes the word Armistice to Veterans. That is all it does. It does not change the basic purpose for which this day has been set aside, and that is the dedication of this day to the cause of world peace. What it does, however, is to give recognition to the fact that before and since World War I, millions of United States men have fought and died under the flag of the United States in the furtherance of world peace. Since the introduction of this bill, I have received many letters commending its objective, and I know that editorials have been written in the press of the land recognizing the value of renaming this national holiday. I believe it is particularly significant that the national veterans organizations, who sponsored November 11th as Armistice Day in commemoration of world peace, are unanimous in their support of my bill, which would change the name Armistice to Veterans Day, and which would bring about a general recognition of the contribution that all veterans have made to the cause of world peace. 
I note that representatives of the National Veterans Organizations are here today to give you the benefit of their views concerning this proposed change. They have indicated to me that if this change is made, a great effort will be put forth by all veterans organizations to sponsor national and local programs which will bring home to the American people and to the world the importance of world peace. I know the chairman can understand that to properly recognize this change will take a considerable amount of planning and committee work. I therefore hope that this subcommittee shall see fit to recommend it and obtain early and favorable consideration by the full committee of the Judiciary and the Senate. Senator Butler, I assure you that the subcommittee will recommend it favorably and work for its passage in the full committee. As I recollect, when this bill came up before the full Judiciary Committee the last time, a question was asked, well, how are we to differentiate between Veterans Day and what we call in Maryland Memorial Day? Mr. Collins, May 30. Senator Butler, the committee felt there would be a lot of confusion throughout the country if this day was changed to Veterans Day. Mr. Rees, in respect to Memorial Day, I am not so sure that all states, North and South, recognize Memorial Day on May 30. Anyway, that is in recognition of the dead. This is in recognition of world peace. It is far different in my opinion. It is so far different in my opinion that I can't see any reason for any confusion on that subject. Mr. Collins. Supplementing what the chairman said, Congressman Rees, this was also discussed before our full committee on this bill. November 11th has traditionally been set apart for veterans of World War I. There was some feeling expressed that we ought to leave that alone, that it was just dedicated to the veterans of World War I. If there is to be any day set aside to honor all veterans of all wars, the feeling was that then we should pick another day. Mr. Rees. As I said before, it is quite significant that the organization that set aside, provided for the setting aside of November 11th as Armistice Day, intended, of course, as you will read, if you read the history attached to it, it was intended to be a day dedicated to world peace. It is interesting to me that that organization, comprising thousands of World War I veterans, and including World War II veterans, too, that that organization is sponsoring the proposed legislation. If that group favors this legislation, I don't see that there is much argument. As a matter of fact, I want to say this to you. I don't know what your experience has been, but my experience is that Armistice Day unfortunately is not being observed as it ought to be observed. If we could get the day named that is for all veterans, so they all feel as if it is their day, we might get it observed. I had experience dealing with this matter out in my home state, my home community, where our groups out there said, all right, we will call Armistice Day All Veterans Day. We will all observe it. They did. They closed the stores, and they had all-day programs out there where the VFW, the DAV, all veterans, not necessarily members of the American Legion or members of the VFW or DAV, but all veterans took part. That is what we are trying to do here. Senator Butler I think it is a good thing, too. If you don't do something of this kind, the day will come when you will have no more World War I veterans, and the day will just go out of existence. It is a national holiday and should be preserved. I think you have got a very good idea. I suggest to you, when this matter comes up before the full committee, that you come over and talk to the full committee. Mr. Collins, yes. Mr. Rees, if we may be assigned a time when we can do that, we will be glad. Senator Butler, I don't want all of you to come. Those sessions are executive sessions. I want Congressman Rees. Mr. Rees, I see. Senator Butler, whereas you could be admitted, the others couldn't. We hold our Judiciary Committee meetings on Monday morning at 1030. If you will come over, I am certain the committee would like to hear from you. Mr. Rees, I should like to get to do that, Senator, if I may. 
I would like to have you hear from my colleagues here. You have a list of them. Senator Butler, yes. Mr. Kennedy, how are you? Mr. Kennedy, fine. Senator Butler, I am a member of two of these organizations, the American Legion and the VFW. Statement of Miles D. Kennedy, Director, National Legislative Commission, the American Legion. Mr. Kennedy, I have a short statement. I would like to read it. Senator Butler, please do. Mr. Kennedy, Mr. Chairman and gentlemen of the subcommittee, my name is Miles D. Kennedy. I am the National Legislative Director of the American Legion. Our office is at 1608 K Street, Northwest, Washington, D.C. At the outset, I wish to thank you for the opportunity of appearing before the subcommittee to present the views of the American Legion in connection with the bill H.R. 7786 to honor veterans on the 11th day of November of each year, a day dedicated to world peace. The membership of the American Legion is composed of men and women who served in the armed forces during World War I, World War II, or the Korean Emergency, and who hold honorable discharges as a result of such military service. As everyone knows, World War I ended on November 11, 1918. This became known as Armistice Day and has been more or less observed as such during the intervening years. The American Legion first went on record in favor of having Armistice Day declared a legal holiday at its second national convention held in Cleveland, Ohio in 1920. Similar action was taken at practically every subsequent national convention of the American Legion until Public Law 510 of the 75th Congress was approved on May 13, 1938, designating November 11th of each year a legal holiday. Before congressional action was taken to make November 11th a legal holiday, 44 states had sponsored and enacted laws through the medium of their respective assemblies or legislature, designating Armistice Day as a legal holiday. The American Legion was instrumental in having this legislation adopted in many states. The fact that no comparable date exists for the termination of hostilities of World War II or the Korean conflict has been of great concern to the members of our organization. I attach a copy of Resolution No. 417, unanimously adopted at our 1952 National Convention, to the effect that our members desire one date to commemorate the ending of the three wars, and urging Congress to pass legislation designating November 11 as a day to be observed annually to represent the closing of all wars in which this country participated, and that a suitable name be chosen for the commemorative day. I respectfully call the subcommittee's attention to the fact that, by far, the greater percentage of our membership is composed of veterans of World War II and Korea. I make this point, should anyone object to using November 11, upon the alleged ground that said date has been associated with the termination of World War I. The resolution of the American Legion follows. Resolution No. 417 of 1952 National Convention of the American Legion, New York, New York, August 25-28, 1952. Committee, Americanism. Subject, November 11 be observed as representing closing of all wars in which the United States has participated. Whereas the 11th of November has been designated by Act of Congress as the National Armistice Day and is observed annually, and, whereas since this act was in honor of the closing of hostilities of World War I, but since its enactment other wars have been fought with varied closing dates, and, whereas the American Legion is composed of veterans of all these wars, and are united in all matters, and desire one date to commemorate these wars, of valor fought by valiant men, and in the interest of the general public, therefore be it resolved that the 1952 National Convention of the American Legion, assembled in New York, New York, August 25-28, 1952, 
urge passage of legislation by the Congress of the United States designating November 11 as a date to be observed annually to represent closing of all previous wars in which the United States of America has participated, and that a suitable name be designated for such commemorative day. Mr. Kennedy. After Congressman Rees introduced H.R. 7786, the American Legion was happy to support the bill when it came on for a hearing before a subcommittee of the House Judiciary Committee, and later on when it was up for consideration by the House. As you know, the bill was passed by the House under date of March 15, 1954, without objection. As was set forth in House Report No. 1333, which accompanied H.R. 7786, and issued by the Committee on the Judiciary under date of March 9, 1954, the general purpose of H.R. 7786 is to expand the significance of Armistice Day and to change its name to Veterans Day. The holiday was originally dedicated to the cause of world peace and has been regarded and observed throughout the land as a day to honor the veterans of the First World War who fought, and especially those who died, for that cause. However, the United States has been involved in two other wars, World War II and the Korean War, in each of which we fought to advance the cause of peace, and each of which added millions of veterans to those of World War I who had fought for the same objectives in 1917 and 1918. H.R. 7786 does not establish a new legal holiday. It expands the significance of an existing holiday in order that a grateful nation, on a day dedicated to the cause of world peace, may pay proper homage to all its veterans who have contributed so much to that cause and the preservation of our way of life. We feel that it is altogether fitting that the United States should honor all of its veterans on a day when those of World War I, in commemoration of the cause of world peace, pause to pay tribute to their comrades who gave their lives fighting for that cause. At this time, I would like to be permitted, on behalf of the National Organization of the American Legion, to express our sincere thanks and grateful appreciation to Congressman Edward H. Rees, Chairman of the House Post Office and Civil Service Committee, for having introduced H.R. 7786 and for sponsoring it in the House. I might insert that I respectfully call the subcommittee's attention to the fact that this is one piece of legislation that does not call for an appropriation, and it doesn't cost the government very much money. Wherefore, on behalf of the American Legion, I respectfully request the subcommittee to approve the bill H.R. 7786. Also, I want to make a point in the record that Resolution No. 417, passed by the American Legion at its 1952 Annual National Convention in New York on August 25-28, to be incorporated here as part of my statement. Senator Butler. It will be, yes. Mr. Collins. Could I refer to this? The only correspondence we have had which opposes such a change is a letter from the 8th Regional Council of the AMVETS, Department of Michigan. In their letter they state as follows. We of Region 8 feel that this move is an encroachment on the right of each era of AMVETS to have individual days to commemorate and honor their fallen comrades of their particular war. Further, that such effort will tend to allow the public to put their moral obligations to these veterans further back in their minds, and eventually conveniently forget that those who have fought for them in the past still exist. I wondered if Mr. Kennedy had any comment on this. Mr. Kennedy. The AMVETS? Senator Butler. That is, the 8th Regional Council, not the action of the whole body. Mr. Kennedy. I don't know what the membership is. I don't know the membership of the national organization. I don't say this disrespectfully, or as critical of any organization. We are all good friends, work and cooperate together. I respectfully request the chairman take into consideration the memberships of the organizations here represented. Furthermore, that this is an expression from one individual group or district. 
I appreciate the fact, just as in any of our organizations, that we have the same thing of our own, men composed of all races, creeds, colors, occupations, that you find here and there dissenting opinions. We go by Robert's rules of order in our conventions and our meetings. This came up in 1952 at our national convention. I know, I was there personally, and there wasn't a single objection registered to it. You will note in my statement that I said our membership is composed of veterans from World War II and Korea as well. They expressed their sentiments there, and no objections were raised. You will note, Mr. Chairman, that that is not a statement of their national organization. Statement of Frederick C. Bellin, Chief Counsel, Post Office and Civil Service Committee, House of Representatives. Mr. Bellin. Mr. Chairman, it seems to me that this position should not be determinative unless the House and Senate and their respective judiciary committees are prepared to authorize at least two additional national holidays, unless there is some reasonable chance every state will do the same. If this is going to be determinative, we shouldn't do it because of this. You should authorize two additional holidays. Senator Butler. I think there is some resistance to authorization of additional holidays. It seems to me the congressman's bill is the best way to get at what we all want to do. I agree wholeheartedly that November 11 is not being used as it should be used. It needs to be revitalized with a measure such as this. That is why I voted for it, supported it in the first instance. Mr. Collins. Mr. Chairman, I am sorry. May I state that I contacted the headquarters of the AMVETS here in Washington, and they are going to submit a statement. I called their attention to this letter from that regional council in Michigan. I was advised, at their last annual meeting, that they did not get to consider a resolution on this particular subject, so they have no resolution to go by. Mr. Kennedy. As the chairman probably knows, if I might interrupt, sir, with your permission, the usual and accepted procedure in all of the chartered veterans' organizations is to have these things cleared through their respective channels, post, county, or state organization, acted on by the national organization. That is the way we do, either by national convention or our governing body between conventions, known as our National Executive Committee. Senator Butler. That is why I pointed out it is the 8th Regional Council, not the whole organization. Mr. Kennedy. I have no authority to speak for that organization. I do think Mr. Downer will agree with me, Mr. Foster and Mr. Clark, that that is more or less accepted procedure. Senator Butler. We have the veterans of foreign wars here? Mr. Downer. Yes. Statement of Aidan M. Downer. Assistant Legislative Representative, Veterans of Foreign Wars of the United States, Washington, D.C. Mr. Downer. My name is Aidan B. Downer, Assistant Legislative Representative of the Veterans of Foreign Wars of the United States. In the beginning, Mr. Chairman, lest I forget to do so, I should like to say that we sincerely appreciate your consideration in scheduling this hearing today and permitting us to express our views to you, especially in view of the fact that the full committee had already voted to postpone indefinitely action on this measure. We really appreciate your giving us an opportunity to express to you our views. Senator Butler. We will try to reverse the action of the committee. Mr. Downer. At first, I think I should like to emphasize that our organization is composed of veterans who have served in the armed forces in every instance of armed conflict since and including the Spanish-American War, subject, of course, to the requirement of service overseas or outside of the continental limits of the United States. About 87% of the membership of our organization is World War II and Korea. The remaining membership includes the Spanish-American War and such recognized campaigns and expeditions as we have had in that period of time. 
I think it is fair to say that the viewpoint of our organization represents a pretty good composite of all the veterans that have served in all instances of armed conflict that are now living. We have about a million and a quarter members and 10,000 posts. At our last encampment, held at Milwaukee, Wisconsin, which was attended by several thousand delegates that came from every state in the Union and all of the territories, this matter was submitted to our convention, and without objection it was unanimously approved that we change the name of Armistice Day to Veterans Day. I think it is rather significant that an organization that has that composite of opinion took that action unanimously. I should like to say this, that in the analysis of the matter, we started with this premise, that there should be a day for nationwide recognition of the termination of our wars, and recognition of those who had participated in them. Starting with that premise, then the next step, it seems to me, in the reasoning process we came to, is, can we have a day for each and every one of them? If not, we must select one day, and any one day that we select, certainly, the argument could be made that it gives greater emphasis to the particular war that terminated on that date. But the veterans of all the other wars, except for that statement that Mr. Collins read into the record, which I think represents a minority of that group, have made no such objection. The veterans of World War II, in our organization, have no such feeling. I think we should keep in mind that when November 11 was established as Armistice Day, that was before World War II had occurred. Certainly, it seems to us that it is not a valid objection to say that we are taking anything from Armistice Day by now making this change, by bringing in and adding to it World War II and Korea, and such other wars as would be included, the Spanish-American and any campaign. It is our feeling that the recognition of Armistice Day has lost its significance, because of the fact that World War II and Korea have occurred since that time, and that since Armistice Day does not include them, people have rather come to the view Armistice Day is rather a passé thing, that it has become unimportant. We believe it will be revitalized to add to it World War II and Korea. One other objection I gather that has been made to it is the matter of recognition of Memorial Day. I copied from the Encyclopedia Britannica this morning the statements contained in that encyclopedia on Memorial Day. It is significant to note in looking for Memorial Day in the encyclopedia, when I came to it, I was referred to Decoration Day. The statement in the Encyclopedia Britannica is carried under Decoration Day. It is significant, I think, to note that according to the encyclopedia, in the state of Virginia, May 30 is observed as a Confederate Memorial Day on June 3, the birthday of Jefferson Davis, and also in Louisiana and Tennessee. April 26 is a date of observance in Alabama, Florida, Georgia, and Mississippi, and May 10 in North Carolina and South Carolina. So it is readily apparent that the observance of Memorial Day is not uniform throughout the country. Further, I think that in the observance of Memorial Day, we all recognize that it is the time for the paying of respect to deceased members of our families and friends, whether they have or have not been in service. I certainly agree with Congressman Rees that it just is not an analogous situation. I don't see where it should be considered at all. So in conclusion, Mr. Chairman, I will just emphasize that this almost is unanimous in our organization. We recommend to your committee, with all of the earnestness and sincerity that we have, that you adopt the legislation contained in Mr. Rees's bill. I thank you. Senator Butler. I feel our committee will respect the wishes of those who are most interested, which are yourselves. I think we can get this thing back on track. I don't think the committee really grasped the significance of Congressman Rees's measure. Mr. Rees, I think that is correct. Senator Butler, I think with that explanation, the committee will vote the bill out. Thanks very much. We have the disabled American veterans with us. Statement of Charles E. Foster, 
Assistant Legislative Representative for the Disabled American Veterans. Mr. Foster. Senator Butler, my name is Charles E. Foster. I am the Assistant Legislative Representative for the Disabled American Veterans. I am happy to say I am also a resident of the Free State of Maryland. Senator Butler. Good. It is a great state. I am very proud to represent it in the Senate. Mr. Foster. I want to state in connection with the bill, H.R. 7786, in which we are appearing before your subcommittee this morning, Senator Butler, the disabled American veterans are in wholehearted agreement with the comments and statements that have been made by the previous witnesses on the subject matter under discussion. There are just one or two other points I would like to emphasize. First, the other days that have been set aside, such as Memorial Day or Decoration Day, as Mr. Downer described it, are not uniform, in that in many states that date is observed on different days of the calendar days of the year. Senator Butler. Then it is true that the states within themselves have their different days. I know we have in Maryland. We have Defender's Day, which is set aside to honor the men that died in North Point defending the Capitol in the war with England. Mr. Rees. Oh, yes, I had never heard of that. Senator Butler. We observe that September 12. It is part of Maryland life. The states themselves have their own little local situations. I agree with you, we should have a day set aside for veterans. It will be a Veterans Day, be dedicated not only to honoring our veterans, but to the obtaining of world peace. I think it is an excellent thing. I think when the rest of the committee comprehends it, they will do something about it. Mr. Foster. Thank you. I agree with that, Senator Butler. There are a few other points. First, when our organization adopted the resolution endorsing changing the name of Armistice Day to Veterans Day, the motion was made by a veteran of World War I. Our organization, the same as the other great veterans organizations, is comprised largely of veterans of World War II and Korea but I think it is significant that the motion which led to our National Executive Committee resolution was made by a World War I veteran. Secondly, I would like to point out that the purpose of the bill, H.R. 7786, is so that the people of this nation can pay homage to the war dead of all the nation's wars, and that the living can dedicate such date to the cause of world peace and to the veterans of this nation's wars. I think that is extremely significant. It certainly puts it on a different plane than adopting the date, May 30, as Veterans Day, in that May 30 has historically been dedicated to honoring the dead, whether they happen to be veteran dead or non-veteran dead. Whereas this date, November 11, would be set aside and the veterans organizations at the community level could join, I know that they will, they have in the past in Congressman Rees's district joined in putting on a proper celebration for the veterans who have fought in all of our wars, and have also joined in paying homage to the dead from the wars in which this nation has engaged. I can't too strongly urge this subcommittee to report this bill favorably and request the full committee to give its consideration. Senator Butler. Fine. Thank you ever so much, Mr. Foster. Mr. Foster. Thank you, Senator Butler. The resolution of the disabled American veterans is as follows. National Executive Committee, Resolution No. 1. Whereas the date of November 11 has been chosen by the Congress to commemorate the close of World War I, and whereas this date was dedicated to world peace and to the veterans of the First World War, and whereas... Since the dedication of November 11 as Armistice Day, the United States has been involved in two great military efforts, each of which has added millions of veterans, living and dead, to the honor rolls of this nation, and, whereas the war dead of World War II and the Korean conflict, as well as the living veterans of these two great military efforts, have not been duly recognized by having an approved date set aside to properly commemorate their military achievements, 
Now therefore be it resolved by the National Executive Committee of the Disabled American Veterans, meeting in Washington, D.C., this 21st day of February, 1954, that we urge our legislative representative to support the bill H.R. 7786, introduced in the second session of the 83rd Congress by the Honorable Edward Rees of Kansas, which has for its purpose the establishment of Veterans Day on the 11th day of November in each year, and that such day be declared a legal holiday, so that the people of this nation can pay homage to the war dead of all the nation's wars, and that the living can dedicate such date to the cause of world peace and to the veterans of this nation's wars. Senator Butler. We have the American Veterans Committee here. Mr. Foster. May I interrupt you again to ask that this resolution be made part of the record following my statement? Senator Butler. It will be made a part of the record. Please state your full name. Statement of Philip J. Hart, National Chairman of the Veterans Affairs Policy Commission of the American Veterans Committee, AVC. Mr. Hart. I am Philip J. Hart, National Chairman of the Veterans Affairs Policy Commission of the American Veterans Committee, Incorporated, AVC, 1751 New Hampshire Avenue Northwest, Washington 9, D.C. Bill Malden, our national chairman, couldn't come today, but I wish to make a brief statement. My statement is very brief, that is, that the AVC heartily endorses the legislation for Veterans Day. I am somewhat handicapped by the fact that our 10th annual convention last year at Atlantic City did not consider this as a specific resolution. It was on the agenda for our National Planning Committee meeting last month in Chicago. During the discussion, it was brought to the attention of the Planning Committee that the full Senate Committee had turned the bill down, and therefore it was considered a dead issue, and no vote was taken. If I may say so, however, as Chairman of the Veterans Affairs Commission, I certainly feel free to convey the endorsement of H.R. 7786 by the American Veterans Committee, AVC, and am certain the National Planning Committee would have endorsed a Veterans Day had they felt that it was a live issue, as it certainly is now that Senate hearings have been called. I would like to state that our reasons for endorsing a Veterans Day may perhaps be somewhat different than the earlier gentlemen have stated. We are particularly active and interested with some of the other United States veterans organizations in the World Veterans Federation, and feel it highly appropriate that there not only be one day in the United States to focus the attention on the veterans and peace, the whole problem of war and so forth, but we are working through the World Veterans Federation for a World Veterans Day. I don't know that the proposal has come along to the stage where the same date might be proposed, but this is what we have in mind, that veterans throughout the free world would celebrate a single day commemorating veterans, their sacrifices, and world peace. I would also like to state that our motto, Citizens First, Veterans Second, has led us to oppose bills for bonus and certain other measures in the past. It sometimes has brought the misunderstanding that we were working against the veterans. Our feeling is that the veteran certainly deserves special recognition and rehabilitation when he is disabled, or when there is anything that deserves special consideration in getting readjusted to the community. AVC has opposed some measures in which we felt bonuses or readjustment privileges after a normal number of years educational benefits years after World War II, the veteran should be adjusted or rehabilitated by this time. But we are very much aware of the veteran's rehabilitation and readjustment problems, particularly with the Korean veteran. In a representation at our convention from that group, they felt very strongly on this. We have now set up a Veterans Benefit Reappraisal Commission to look into the veterans' benefits as they go to the Korean veterans. I would just like to repeat that we heartily endorse this legislation. We feel it is very appropriate to set aside one day for a Veterans Day, 
as a day for re-evaluating the purposes of veterans' organizations and veterans' benefits. I wish to thank you for the opportunity to present the views of AVC on H.R. 7786, Senator. Senator Butler. I can't tell you how happy I am to have had you, Congressman Rees and gentlemen present today. Statement of Omar Clark, Disabled American Veterans. Mr. Clark. Senator Butler, Mr. Foster spoke for the Disabled American Veterans. The only thing I could add is that it would seem to me to be very timely for the Congress of the United States to designate one day in which the people of the United States would be dedicated to world peace. Senator Butler. Thank you ever so much, sir. I can't tell you how much I thank you all for coming here. Whereupon, at 11.15 a.m., the hearing in the above entitled matter closed. End of Hearing Before a Subcommittee of the Committee on the Judiciary, United States Senate, 83rd Congress, Second Session, on H.R. 7786, to honor veterans on the 11th day of November of each year, a day dedicated to world peace. Recording by Tricia G.